Okay, welcome back. We're continuing with complex numbers lesson one. In example four, let's use the same values from three, but let's multiply seven plus two i times three minus four i. We'll use FOIL. We'll expand by multiplying the first terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last terms. 7 times 3 is 21. Inside terms 2i and 3 multiplied give us plus 6i. The outside terms 7 and negative 4i give us minus 28i. And the last terms 2i times negative 4i is negative 8i squared. Recall from the exponentiation of i that i squared is negative 1. So negative 8i squared is negative 8 times negative 1. I'll change that fourth term to plus 8. And now we'll combine the real parts and the imaginary parts. 21 plus 8 is 29. 6 minus 28 is minus 22i. In example 5, let's again use the same numbers from 3 and 4. This time we're going to perform division. 7 plus 2i divided by 3 minus 4i. And here we're going to learn about the concept of a complex conjugate. The conjugate of a complex number has a matching real term and an opposite sign imaginary term. When we're dividing by a complex number, we want to multiply by a fraction with the numerator and denominator of the conjugate of the complex number in the original denominator. Our denominator is 3 minus 4i, so the conjugate is 3 plus 4i. That will be in the numerator and in the denominator of the fraction we're going to multiply by. In the numerator, 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 4i is 28i, 2i times 3 is 6i, and 2i times 4i is 8i squared. In the denominator, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4i is 12i, negative 4i times 3 is minus 12i, and negative 4i times 4i is negative 16i squared. And notice that the middle two terms offset. This always happens when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate. We're trying to remove the imaginary part of the denominator. Multiplying by the conjugate achieves that result. We continue to simplify. I'll change plus 8i squared to minus 8 because i squared is negative 1. I'll change negative 16 i squared to plus 16 for the same reason. Now in the numerator, 21 minus 8 is 13. 28 i plus 6 i is plus 34 i. In the denominator, 9 plus 16 is 25. We can separate this result into a real part 13 over 25, and an imaginary part, plus 34 over 25i. That covers the concept of a complex conjugate. Now let's look at the concept of equality. Two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. And we'll see an example of equality in our final problem. Problem number six, the equation quantity x minus 2y plus i times quantity 3x plus 2y equals negative 4 plus 12i. We have a complex number on the left side of the equation, a complex number on the right side of the equation. As this is an equation, they are equal, and according to our rule, if two complex numbers are equal, the real parts must be equal, and the imaginary parts must be equal. The real part on the left is x minus 2y. That must be equal to the real part on the right, which is negative 4. And the imaginary part on the left is 
3x plus 2y, which must be equal to the imaginary part on the right, which is 12. Here we have two simultaneous equations. If we work through the algebra to solve for x and y, we end up with x equals 2 and y equals 3. We've now covered the concepts of real part, imaginary part, conjugate, and equality. And we've worked through several examples of performing operations with complex numbers. This concludes Complex Numbers Lesson 1.